and everybody around the world through Skype, so I'm going to speak up a little bit. But uh, it's been a pleasure to talk with Victor and get this planned, and now to, to meet you both. Congratulations. It's a very important decision that you two make, and it's the importance of that decision that justifies us to gather, to celebrate, and to say a few things. I'm not going to get long and preachy, but the importance of your decision justifies me to take just a few moments and say a few things about successful marriages. First thing I want to say is obviously you guys are doing the right things. Obviously you're making this relationship work for you. I want you to give serious thought to what you've been doing to make this a successful relationship, so successful that you're ready, willing, and happy to make this very, very important commitment and commit now to continue to do these things more frequently, more sincerely. This wedding will not be an excuse to start being lazy or taking each other for granted. It'll just be impetus to be even better for each other. I'm sure the things that you've been doing in your relationship to get yourselves to this point include being patient with each other. I suspect that planning and pulling off this wedding has been a good test of patience. And it's a very nice event, so you're, you're doing well. I'm sure you also need to continue to be grateful for your differences. So many times we see relationships where the couple seem to be just gritting their teeth and putting up with their differences. You two come to this point in your lives with very distinct life histories. With a lot of differences. You're two grown, mature, strong-willed, developed people. Inevitably, there are going to be things that you two disagree on. Never be afraid when you have a difference of opinion. Never be concerned that you may not always agree. That shows that you're two humans with your own minds, and that's a healthy way to be. When that happens, don't waste any time arguing about who's right, who's better, but listen to each other, and I promise that if you spend less time defending yourself, convincing, trying to persuade, and more time silently, respectfully listening, you'll be amazed at how much that other person has to teach you and how much you can learn from each other. And what's more, there's no need to try to change each other's minds or opinions. You're already in love. You fell in love with each other the way you found each other. So there's no need to improve each other or change each other. And as you love and accept each other, as you found each other, be willing, though, to improve yourselves. Always focus on yourself and what you can do to improve the relationship, and less on what you miss from the other or wish the other would do. Be willing to do your part. 
And lastly, I want to counterbalance some of the messages we get from Disneyland and Hollywood about love. It seems like all of our music and all of our movies that talk about love emphasize that syrupy, sweet, romantic feeling part of love. Almost as if that's all there is to love. Even though that is a big and important part of your love, never forget that it is just a part. And it is a part that's not a constant part. Even though you're always in love, there will be moments that aren't syrupy, sweet, and romantic. That's normal. I think if we were caught in that romantic mood all day long, we'd never get anything done sometimes. So fortunately, we are allowed to experience the full spectrum of our emotions as human beings. Sometimes we're even discouraged, even hurt, even angry. In those brief moments, draw strength from knowing the truth that that's going to pass. That's temporary. What's not temporary, what's not going to pass, is your love, your commitment, and your obligation to always behave lovingly. Even if you're temporarily discouraged, you can still choose to treat each other with dignity and with respect, as if you're in love, as in love as you are at this very moment, and draw strength from the memory of this moment. Even though we can't always control how we feel, we can, accept the responsibility to always control how we treat each other. So that's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to try to tell you guys more than that. I want to, uh, I want you to know that these guys have given a lot of thought to this ceremony. I uh, usually hesitate to read, but these guys give this thought and they want this to happen a certain way, so I'm going to read this part. Victor Tay, will you have this woman to be your wedded wife? Will you love her, honor her, and keep her in sickness and in health, in poverty as in wealth, and forsaking all others, keep thee only unto her for so long as you both shall live? Do you so promise? Very good. Victor soft spoken like me. You may not have heard that, but there is no doubt there. Elizabeth As Ascanio, will you have this man to be your wedded husband? Will you love him, honor him, keep him in sickness as in health, in poverty as in wealth? And forsaking all others, keep thee only unto him, for so long as you both shall live. Do you so promise? I do. Very good, thank you. And now I will prompt you through the exchange of your vows, starting with you, Victor. I, Victor K. I, Victor K. Take thee, Elizabeth Ascanio. Take thee, Elizabeth Ascanio. Before God and these witnesses. Before God and these witnesses. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death do us part. Till death do us part. Now will you repeat to your husband? I, Elizabeth Ascanio. I, Elizabeth Ascanio. Take thee, Victor K. Take thee, Victor K. Before God and these witnesses. Before God and these witnesses. To be my wedded husband. To have and to hold. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For richer, for poor. In sickness and in health. 
to love, to love, cherish, cherish, and obey, and obey, till death do us part. Till death do us part. And now we will get the license. Do you want to do that right now? I'm sorry. Can you get that? I'll get there. Now do the exchange of the rings. If you'll go ahead and be right there and be ready to come up. If you would please repeat to your wife. Well, you want to have a new tour. Right? Okay, please come forward. Sorry about that. Give him the ring for her. If you want, we can start that. Place the ring. Repeat. I give you this ring. I give you this ring as a token of my love. As a token of my love and faithfulness. And faithfulness. Wear this ring. Wear this ring as a reminder. As a reminder 
of the vows that we have spoken today. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the laws of the state of Arizona, it is a privilege and a pleasure now to recognize, present, and pronounce you as husband and wife. You may now kiss each other. Cameras, get ready. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is a privilege and a pleasure now to present to you Mr. and Mrs. Victor Tay. Alright, at this time this is where we're going to have the reception to outside. Um, so stick around. We're going to bring food down here. So hopefully you guys are hungry. And uh, a little bit later we'll be doing some more things. Um, if you get a chance, definitely come over here and sign this picture. This isn't a picture of Victor and Elizabeth, but there'll be one there eventually. Um, and then one other thing right now, this apartment right upstairs, 207, is where if you need to use the restroom or anything like that, it's open up for us to use at our own need. So uh, we'll go ahead and get food out here so we can eat. Thank you, Fred. So, anyways, just want to say hello now. Uh, maybe in front of you. Yeah. <laughs> well, that <laughs> How's your role of MC playing out so far? No. Huh? How's the role of MC playing out so far? Why you gotta interrupt me whenever I'm singing nothing but the blood? <laughs> How am I interrupting you? I'm just asking you a question. Oh. Um, so far I think it's going good. Um, it's, a, it's a position that uh, takes some transition, transitioning into. It's not just something you just wake up one day and decide to be. Like I'm just going to be an MC. I'm just, yeah. This was something I put a lot of thought into, especially whenever Victor told me yesterday that that's what I was going to do. Um, well, I saw that you had a list. Yes, so I, you did, you did. I did do some researching. I checked some books out of the library. I went and interviewed a couple of guys who do this professionally. And, uh, I also heard you went back and listened to some old MC Hammer albums. I did. Just to make sure you had all your bases covered. Yeah. I heard Stucky quoting. Oh, he was doing more than quoting. Yeah, he was. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't just him quoting. Are you recording this? What? Ignore the camera. The camera's not there. Dave, do you want to sit down and split my, pay, my plate with me? I'm having fun recording Brett here <laughs> on the MC role, but I suppose. Yeah, don't give him the food. I'll, I'll eat. <laughs> she knows you. <laughs> Hi. Oh, sign, sign the, um... No, Kevin already signed for us. Yeah? Oh, you can sign, too. And you put, you put it right here. Mr. Tux? Yes, sir. No, uh, his question. Yes. What's your question? Who wants to get this chair? Phone's ringing. Did you get him back on, Victor? Yeah. 
testing one, two, three. I am standing where somebody will be standing. Hey, even Australians think I'm funny. <laughs> Only Australians. All the Australians? Can you guys hear okay? Hey Brett, just say some things and see what Can you hear Brett? <laughs> now, I'm on, uh, now that I'm under pressure, I can't work it like this. Can you hear me? Can you hear us? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, cool. Can you hear me now? Look how far everybody sit. They, they heard who was going up first. And they don't like What's yeah, going on? Nobody wants to listen. Especially our church. The church is just like, What's going on? Relax and I'll announce what's going on. Okay? Just eat, eat your chow mein. <laughs> and relax. Well, at this time, I'm pleased to uh, introduce to you Mr. Matthew Stuckey. He's going to say a couple couple words. Um, so it's all the stage is yours, Stuckey. Go ahead. Cool. I've known uh, Victor for about a year. He moved down here. When he first moved down here, he started rooming with me. And uh, he came down here because he wanted to you know, know a lot more about God and become a much better Christian. And he, he knew about our church, so he came down here. And I probably know Victor better than everybody except Elizabeth. It's here because I've been rooming with him for about a year now. And me and Victor, our personalities are very different. If you know us, our personalities couldn't be more different. Right. Victor is one of my best friends. And, right. you know, because of the Christian bond that we have is the reason why we're such good friends. You know, we've gone soul winning together, which not everybody may know what that means. But, uh, you know, we're really close friends due to that bond. And if you know anything about Victor, Victor's one of the most generous people you're ever going to meet. When I, one thing you notice about him, he's always taking people out to eat. A lot of people here could vouch for that. He's taking me out to eat plenty of times. He fixes food, and gives, gives you extra and everything. He's a very, very generous person. Now, I was fortunate enough to be there when Victor and Elizabeth met. So we were at the mall, and you know, I was kind of like, Victor was interested in her. He thought she was you know, a very beautiful young girl. And so I was trying to push Victor to talk to her. And so he went up and started talking to her and everything. And so then he obviously liked her because he was talking about her a lot. and, and I thought that was great and everything. And then after about three weeks, he's like, you know, <laughs> he's like, I'm getting, in, I'm engaged with Elizabeth now. And obviously, my first reaction, I thought it was a little bit rushed. And I, at the time, I really didn't know much about Elizabeth because I had seen her a few times and talked to her a little bit. But I didn't know a whole lot about her at the time. And so I, my first thought, honestly, I was trying to tell Victor, well, you might want to give it some time, make sure she's the right one and everything. And um, over the course of the last, because they've known each other for what, like two and a half months? About? Today would be like two months. Two months today. <laughs> I was trying to stretch it out for you. Yeah, I'm yeah, trying to make it look better. But, um, you know, over the course of that time, I've gotten to know Elizabeth a lot better. And I've talked to her and developed a friendship with her. And you can tell around each other they're very happy. They're definitely meant for each other. They're a great match. I'm sure it will work. So, um, you know, I just want to congratulate them tonight. I'm very happy for them. So. Thank you, Matthew. That's from the heart, I can tell. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, sure. I don't hey, know. Jason, if you have to go, maybe you can go next. Jason? Is that his name? Jason, I'm assuming K. Right. I don't know. Maybe I'm really cool this close. Can we pull this close? Right. Easy. There we go. Okay, people can hear you. They can't see you, though, so. <laughs> okay. So this is, this is Victor's can you, brother. Can you see guys see us? Sounds just like you, Victor. <laughs> I can see you now. This is creepy. All uh, right, can everyone hear us? Yeah, we can definitely hear you. All right, do it. Okay, okay. Uh, I'll try to speak a bit slower so you don't miss it. Creepy. All right, let's go. All right. Okay, well, all right, Victor, Victor has... has a, as a kid, um, Victor was a really cute kid, and um, and that used to get him out of a lot of trouble because he was he was so cute. And then in primary school, Victor and I had a little crime racket going, where we would go and take things from the store. Um, and I used to be a really bad influence on Victor, and he'd never get in trouble because he was so cute. And so we would just—it wasn't our parents' fault. 
um, it's just that we were clever little sinners. And then Victor, um, when he went into school, he went on to start his own little crime racket. He was um, throwing stones and breaking office windows and pouring cans of baked beans all over cars in Fremantle. And then in 2000, uh, we moved out of home and into the unit that I currently stay in with Katrina. And um, still then I was a pretty bad influence on Victor because we used to go, you know, my friends and I, we used to always go out clubbing and drinking. And Victor used to wish he was 18 so that he could go out drinking with us. And it wasn't until 2001 uh, where, where I got saved and then God started working in my life to change all those bad influences. And I hope that the one good influence I've had on Victor was that God was in our home. And it took Victor a while uh, to go through all the material and to think about it. But in 2005, he finally put his trust in Jesus and he was saved. And so Victor has now changed uh, or hopefully that has been a good influence in Victor's life and now Victor has changed and he started to become an influence in other people's lives. Um, I know that Victor has helped to bring uh, Gavin to Christ um, and he's had lengthy talks with Keen and John and Ian with Charles and Dan and Lowell and he's also been a good influence on me as well. Victor's actually the one that um, encouraged me to stop um, drinking alcohol which has been a blessing in my life and a good testimony as well. Uh, the other thing is, is after Victor got saved, right, he always, uh, we, me, he and I would always have these little talks, pretty much all the time, every night. He works pretty hard and he works really late um, in restaurants and he'd come home and he would come and stand in my doorway and we'd talk about one of two things. We'd either talk about God or we'd talk about girls. And Victor, and mo re recently, it has always been about girls. And um, so he's been trying to find, just before he left um, to, to Arizona, he was looking, you know, he was trying to find somebody that had all the right boxes checked, um, someone that met all the requirements that he had. And we'd, we'd sort of say that this person, Victor, was, was non-existent. He'd never find out, and he should just settle with somebody Somebody in Perth. Um, so he travelled over there with not much hope. And I remember uh, when he got there, and, he, and he, one of the first things he said to me is he said, all the girls here are either married or pregnant. <laughs> and then he said, there's, no, there's nobody here uh, that's suitable for him uh, until he met Elizabeth. And so in the Bible, in Proverbs 18.22, it says, Whoso findeth the wife, findeth a good, good thing and obtaineth favour of the Lord. So Victor's been in search for this soulmate for quite some time. And now that he's found Elizabeth, I think most others think that it's too quick for them to get married. Actually, I think it was too quick for them to get married as well. But I know the journey that Victor has been going through uh, to find Elizabeth. And even though it's only been a couple of months and they've known each other, uh, Victor knew what he was looking for uh, long before he actually met Elizabeth. So when she came along, uh, Victor, could, Victor knew instantly that he wanted to marry her. So, and even if we, you know, even if um, the whole world objected, I think he loves her so much, he would, he would have ignored everyone and married her anyway. <laughs> um, so the thing that I'm annoyed with is that he's beaten me to it. Um, and I'm supposed to be his big brother, and he's supposed to respect me. <laughs> but, but, but it's alright, you know, I'm happy that he's found um, Elizabeth. Hey, Victor? Yeah, can you see me? Hello, Victor? Yeah, can you move over just a bit so that I can see Elizabeth? Okay, cool. Yeah, because I got part of this speech for you, Elizabeth. Okay, Elizabeth, um, how are you doing? Good. Okay. Now, <laughs> you look you look beautiful, um, but you can rest with Victor. You can rest easy because I think you found yourself a good man. Uh, Victor can be pretty strong-willed and stubborn at times, 
but but he's got his mind fixed on eternal things, and he's a very good worker, and he'll provide for your family, um, probably not with manual labour because with most Asians he's white and he's white collared and delicate, <laughs> but but he'll provide with his mouth because he's a good talker, and that's what will put food on your table. <laughs> yeah. Um, He's got that gift, um, but I think more importantly is that Victor, he will be faithful to you. He'll take care of you and he'll stick by your side to the end. Um, he's got a really big responsibility you know, now to, to lead you and, and protect you and to love you. And I'm sure he knows that because we've talked that one of the things that were in our, in our talks um, is that he, you know, he really knows what he's got, what work he's got ahead of him and he knows what God wants him to do. Um, so now those late night talks, um, I'll hand over to you. So he'll he'll come and he'll talk to you until um, until you actually want him to leave. <laughs> and, and I mentioned a couple of weeks back to you that it's not going to be easy marrying Victor because it's going to be a different life. It's going to be a new life, and you probably end up over here in Australia. Uh, so it's not going to be an easy thing. Uh, but. Uh, and yeah, and, and the other thing is, I know because I know it's not going to be easy because of the plans that Victor has in the future. So I'm going to give you, I'm going to leave you a passage in the Bible that hopefully will encourage you um, and and also uh, give you something to work towards. And that's from Proverbs 31, verses 10 to 12. It says, "Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her." so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. So in the Bible, this is the only passage that tells man to trust in someone other than God. So Victor has to then learn um, to trust his whole heart with you. So that's an important thing because he won't be able to leave, lead his family unless he knows that he's got you by his side. And as I'm getting married, I know that my wife with you know, my future wife to be, uh, with her by my side, she makes me feel um, like like I can accomplish anything. And I think with Vic, with you by Victor's side, uh, you didn't have to give him that confidence in you as well. And I'm sure that if you do, um, you, you guys will have a very blessed future, and God will bless you richly. So, uh, welcome to the family. Uh, we we do welcome you, and and I'd like to propose a toast. So we're gonna. Um, I don't have a cup. So we'll lift, we'll lift our plastic <laughs> cups of orange juice. <laughs> Go ahead, Fonda, spare no expense. <laughs> can you see everyone? Just nod if you can. I can see Fred. Yeah, so. I can see Fred to Anna in the back. All right, all right. All right, here's a toast to Victor and Elizabeth. Uh, we pray that God will be with you all your days, and then you'll, you'll raise a large and happy family. And to Victor. Cheers. 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 <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> okay, Victor. God bless. And you too, Elizabeth. Thanks, Jason. Lovely words. Now you've given me some ideas for the recipe. I just uh, put the Victor spin on it. <laughs> um, I think uh, did Katrina and Emily want to say something, or, or just like, uh, I'll say something. yeah, I got something. Well, I think Baba will go like after the girls, you know, unless you want to stick. Are you not sticking around, Baba? Um, I'll let the girls. Well, know, I, I may have to go. Okay. I can I can follow, I can speak first. Every, everybody can hear you, Bob, but nobody can see you. So you can introduce yourself and everyone. Oh, uh, okay. They can't see me. They can't see you, but they can hear you. Oh, uh, okay. Well, for everybody here, they know I'm your father, and also to those in Arizona, a big welcome. A big welcome. Today, today, I say it is a very special day 
And not because of this high tech link up to Arizona, to Sydney, to Auckland in New Zealand, but it's the day our youngest son is married. When Victor said to me that, Papa, I have found a girl. And he said, you will like her. She is lovely. She built like Mama. And she also likes home duty. So before I can digest the story, the news came through to say that Victor is engaged. Now, before I can blink my eye, and a message came through, Victor is getting married. Now, Jason said to me, Papa, you are the first person to give the approval and the blessing for this marriage. Now, how can I say no? How can I not approve this marriage when Elizabeth is every bit by my own wife? <laughs> I'm married to one and I'm very happy about that. So, for that reason, for that reason, I have no choice but say yes. <laughs> now, to Elizabeth, <laughs> and, and it may be a, a ploy that Victor is working on me, and it works. <sighs> to Elizabeth, and to all the Aciano family, and to all your uh, mothers and all your brothers and sisters, and to all the friends and your relatives in Arizona, I want you to know that my wife and I welcome Elizabeth into the Tay family. And we are also very pleased to have you as our first daughter-in-law. You beat Jason to that. And what I, I hope I hope I'm clear when I speak to you. What I want to say here, I want to cut the speech short because Jason has made a very long and very accurate speeches. Now what I want to say here is God is on your side. Your God is on your side, but you two have each other side by side. From here on, you are husband and wife, and your journey from here on is very long and challenging. And I would like you too to realize that marriage is a union of two minds together. And from here on, you too must work or build on your strength and then work on your weakness. And you must cherish your love for each other and from here on live a happy life as a married couple. And I wish you both happiness and long in your love. And as Victor will say it, very soon I probably probably have grandchildren <laughs> from you two. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> and for Elizabeth, I welcome you to Australia. It's a lucky country and we look forward to eating your Mexican food, which is tortilla and lots of beans. <laughs> and you can also come here and taste Mama's cooking, which is very authentic Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I look forward to that day when you come. And before I end this speech, I would like to give Victor and you three cheers. Hip hip! 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 Hip h
Okay, bye now. We'll see you next time. <laughs> Thanks, Baba. Okay, did uh, did um, did Katrina and Emily want to say something? Or? I do. I want to say to you. Well, who wants to go first? Maybe we'll let. I'll go first. We'll let Katrina go first. Okay, Katrina. I haven't got a I haven't got a written speech, so it's quite Katrina, impromptu. Introduce yourself but, um, because nobody can see you. Introduce yourself because nobody can see you. Oh. Hi, I'm, hi everybody. I'm uh, Victor's oldest sister. I'm in Sydney and I'm here with my husband, Quick. And um, <laughs> the first I heard of this was on my birthday. This is the first time I spoke to Elizabeth, which was on the 30th of June. And that was the first I heard about Elizabeth, knowing that Victor had been in Arizona for a year. And um, I'd just like to say Welcome to the family, and I haven't had a chance to get to know you yet, but in the future I'm sure you'll be in Australia sometime soon, and we've always got our door open for you two. I even had some furniture for you guys <laughs> when you were planning on coming here, so I'm going to hold that for you just in case you decide to come to Sydney one day, and you can come and meet us face to face, and I would love to show you or teach you how to cook a few things. If you haven't <laughs> got to the point where you're as good as Mama yet. <laughs> but um, yeah, just welcome to the family and I wish you all the best and happiness for your future. Thank you. Hey, hey Vix. Yeah. Um, your, your dad would like to add in something. Yeah, just... sure. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh, nothing serious. It's just that I mentioned about Mama, so I want to introduce Mama to Elizabeth. Oh yeah, you never met my no, dad's no. wife. <laughs> Elizabeth, uh, Mama doesn't Hi, Mama. speak a lot of English, but I will introduce so that you can look at her and see her, so you know who she is. Hello, Elizabeth. Hello, Elizabeth. Nice to meet you. Yeah, yeah. my English is not very good, <laughs> so I didn't say hello. Now we can okay. 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 You're so beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Um, she doesn't say very much, but <laughs> at least, at least you have a close up of Mama's face. So in the future, when you comes here, you know who she is. Yeah. Okay. 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 Bye bye. Thank bye. you. Bye. bye. Okay. Uh, thanks for coming. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Oh, that's all right. That's not important. Thanks, Rena. Yeah, we'll probably need that. You're furniture. welcome, and welcome to the family. And congratulations from the both of us. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Emily. Okay. Um, hi everyone there, um, I'm Emily, Victor's second sister, Emily, um, and my husband Manu is here as well. We're um, in Auckland, New Zealand. So I thought I'd say a few words, um, just I guess to start with congratulations guys. And okay, so Victor is three years younger than me, so we've not really got much distance between us. But I guess growing up, Victor's never really been my younger brother that I look after, the more annoying brother that I used to follow around. <laughs> so um, to me, Victor was always the scapegoat that we used to use. When um, growing up, we were left alone quite a bit when we were younger to sort of play amongst ourselves. And whenever we were in trouble, my mum used to ask us, who did this? And I'd say, Victor did. And Katrina would say, Victor did. And Jason would say, Victor did. <laughs> and because we were all so young, well, Victor was so young, he would start crying and go, I did, I did. <laughs> but um, it wasn't until Victor got a bit older that he started to stand up for himself and we couldn't use him that way anymore. <laughs> so um, I guess it's a big part of our life is just Victor's always been a little brother. And um, it is kind of strange to see him grow up because we didn't expect him to. Wait, Emily, Emily, they went out. Yeah. Uh,
<laughs> Vite got cut off. <laughs> because desert climate is not very good for <laughs> internet. <laughs> All right, if you go am leak, is Uber shut down on me for some reason? <laughs> I don't know where I am in my seat. You're saying that like you kept using me as your scapegoat, and then I started standing up for myself. Yeah. <laughs> I remember. I still haven't forgiven. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Um, yeah, I guess that's really it. So I guess just, um, yeah, it's, it's really lovely that you found you, Elizabeth. I'm looking forward to meeting you and so is Manu. Um, yeah, and welcome to the family. It's nice to have another sister. <laughs> you are now our fifth. <laughs> so, um, welcome to the family. Look forward to meeting you. Congratulations, Victor. Oh, and wait. Thank you. Uh, well, it looks like it's going to start raining out here. Yeah, so, uh, is this your electrical stuff? Well, wait, 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 yeah, and um, he said it was going to rain, so the yeah the temperature fluctuation is going to change like some internet stuff. Come on, Victor, you can do it.